Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Jim Hoffman here, uh, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is near time for our daily devotion, so I'm jumping online live uh, for us to be able to gather to do that. Looking forward to having friends uh, join me here shortly, and as you do, I would encourage you to take a moment to make a comment and let me know that you're here. I would love to say hello to you this morning, acknowledge that you're with us, but We'll take a moment to wait for folks to gather. Beautiful Monday outside. <clears throat> oh, my wife is first. Oh, good morning, Margaret. Hi, Linda. Good morning to you. Yeah, I had a great time last night. Enjoyed our little outdoor worship service. Who would have thought that it would have been cooler in August than it was in July? <laughs> so, good morning, Barbara Meyer. Good morning, Jack. Hey, glad to have both of you with us this morning. Just remember, as you sign in, if you want to take a moment to say hello, that would be awesome. <clears throat> Good morning, Shirley. Glad you're with us this morning. It's nice to meet you last night, by the way. Hi, Barbara. Thank you for showing up for last night as well. Glad you were there. It's nice to meet you in person. Good morning. Hi, Pat and Jack. I hope you guys are enjoying Breckenridge. Beautiful time of the year to be up there. For us, for us non-skiers, this is the time of the year to be up there. For the skiers, it's not necessarily. <laughs> any any time at Breckenridge is probably a beautiful time. Let's see, anybody else? For those of you who are here, we're going to be reading out of Romans chapter 8 today, by the way, so you might want to take a moment to find that. All right, let's go ahead and get started, everyone. Romans chapter 8, we're going to be reading verses 31 to 39. And here is what uh, Paul writes in his letter to the Romans. So what are we going to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't he also freely give us all things with him? Who will bring a charge against God's elect people? If God who if it is God who acquits them, acquits them, who is going to convict them? It is Christ Jesus who died, even more who was raised, and who also is at God's right side. It is Christ Jesus who also pleads our case for us. Who will separate us from Christ's love? Will we be separated by trouble or distress or harassment or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, we are being put to death all day long for your sake. We are treated like sheep for slaughter. But in all these things, we win a sweeping victory through the one who loved us. I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus, our Lord, not death or life nor angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or anything that is created. Our author today is D.L. Ellis Johnson from Texas. Focus verse that D.L. picked was uh, verses 38 and 39, neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers 
nor things present, nor things come to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And here is uh, the, the devotion that was offered for us today. It said, Hurricane Harvey, a Category 4 storm, touched down on the, on the Texas Middle Coast August of 2017. After four days of intense rain, some areas were deluged with more than 40 inches of water. The damage caused by the destructive and deadly storm shook America to its core. On Monday after the storm, a Dallas newspaper reported that some people held Sunday worship services in an outdoor athletic facility in South Texas where Hurricane Harvey hit hardest. Those who attended said it was important for them to be at worship despite the ravages of the storm. They were demonstrating their faith in Christ. In his letter to the Roman church, Paul said that none of life's events can separate us from God's love. We are more than conquerors. The people in South Texas proved that devastating circumstances and calamities like Hurricane Harvey cannot prevent us from worshiping the true and living God. We will bless the Lord at all times with our faith rooted and grounded in Christ. We are unshakable. And the thought for the day was, I will trust in the Lord at all times. I was thinking about uh, the, the side of this. You know, there, there's a couple of different angles at which you can certainly look at, at Paul's words, right? There are the outside external forces that are going on in the world around us. Um, and certainly those are things that um, can be a, a, a pause for us as, as a people. They can cause an interruption in our lives. Um, and, and bring us to a state almost and sometimes a, a grind, kind of like grinding halt. Uh, several years ago, I had the opportunity to travel with a mission team to New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. We went about six weeks after the hurricane hit that area. And, and parts of the city were still up and functioning, and it's like parts of the city were just a ghost town. And it was the oddest thing ever to drive by homes and, and FEMA had gone through and they had put these X's on there and it had to do with, you know, not only humans that were deceased that they found there or animals or things like, and it had all these, these different kinds of, of, of markings that were on the outside of these houses where they had gone through and cleared all of these things. Part of the city's functioning, Bourbon Street, you know, back up and running not too long afterwards, but other parts of the city were just decimated by this. I think the same thing is probably true with other cities. I went to Joplin, you know, not long after the tornado ripped through Joplin, and you see the parts of the city are still thriving, and then there's a swath, you know, of town that's just decimated. There's external things that can certainly happen in our lives that can bring them to a grinding halt, right? I think about, you know, some, some of these things that are a little bit more more personal, that kind of change the trajectory of your life or, or even change the quality of your life. I have a family member who um, was diagnosed with dementia late in their later years. And, and I remember visiting that family member shortly before they died and the dementia was, was so pronounced that my, my family member had basically reverted back to almost an infantile state, right? Um, could not speak for themselves, um, you know, had lost basically their, their complete mental capability to form sentences and, and all those kinds of things. And, and you, you think about a person finding themselves in such a helpless state, right? And, and, and that altered the whole course of your life. The author of our, our devotion talks about the aspect of, of these things that interrupt our relationship with God, right? Um, and, and, you know, this, this comment of we will bless the Lord at all times with our faith rooted and grounded in Christ, we are unshakable, right? It, it's, it's from our perspective. But when you think about people who find themselves decimated, either their, their life, or, or their health, they might wonder where God is. Has God left them behind? 
Where is God in the middle of their circumstances? Right? And I think one of the things that's important about this is to be reminded that no matter what happens in our lives, whether it is of our own fault, a natural disaster, or it's something that has to do with the breakdown of the body and the mind, that God does not leave us. We, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. We are claimed by God through Christ Jesus as his own, and God loves us no matter what we encounter, experience, do, all of these things, right? God's love is there for us. And so I think one of the important things for us to remember is, is that no matter what we're experiencing in life, God promises to be steadfast and faithful, and that God's love promises to be ever-present for us. It may be difficult for us to experience it and acknowledge it, but maybe part of faith is just simply knowing. Knowing that God promises to be there, and then that knowing, we can trust that the Lord is there at all times, and that God's love is present at all times. And so... I want to encourage you to think about that for yourself right now. Whatever you're experiencing, whether it be kind of a, a breakdown in, in things that are, that are happening, the normal aspects of your life, your work environment, your relationships, maybe some of your health even. You may be wondering, where is God in the middle of all of this? And what we want you to hear today is, is that nothing separates us from the love of God that is made known in Christ Jesus, that God is with every single one of us in the middle of the beautiful, the beautiful day and the troublesome day. All right. So I hope you hear that message today and can have faith in it and belief in it. And let's take a moment to just simply pause and pray as we give thanks to God for being present with us. So loving and living God, Help us to always be steadfast, immovable, and abounding in your work and your love at all times. May this be buoyed by the fact that you are these things for us, steadfast, immovable, that you are always abounding in love for each one of us. And at the times where we mm -hmm. think it's dark, at the times where we are searching for you, we pray that you make yourself known that you might let us know that you are there and that your love is with us. In Jesus' name and for his sake, we pray these things. Amen. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's great to see those that, that also joined as we were in the you know, in process. Barbara, Chris, I'm glad that you were here. Garth and Cherry. Hey, Drew Brought, I hope you are doing well. I appreciate the early birthday wishes. I've still got a few more days to go and, and until my birthday, but I do appreciate those early wishes. My, Diana Murray, I'm glad that you are here as well, um, and others. Thank you so much for joining us today. I, I hope that at the end of this, you'll take an opportunity to share this on your own Facebook page so that others might have a chance to join in our daily devotion. I hope that you have a blessed rest of your Monday, and I will look forward to visiting with you tomorrow, same time, 1145. Have a great and wonderful Monday afternoon.